Hey, uh, I did two exciting things today. I I got um, I ordered a couple of used lots of vintage watch parts uh, on Ricardo, the Swiss auction website. And I also went to EPHJ. EPHJ is the um, the world of high precision. It's an expo in Geneva, and it's mostly watchmaking stuff. Um, because in Geneva, most of the high precision stuff is dedicated to watchmaking. There's some talk of medical and there's some crossover businesses, but mostly I just saw watchmaking stuff. So um, <clears throat> tomorrow I'm going to go back and um, try to do some blogging from the expo, at least recording it and then come back and edit it. And um, and then the uh, one thing I saw there today that's cool that I use a lot is Luminova. They have a booth every year. And they gave me these samples of, um, I've been using just green and white, uh, both of which glow green. So they gave me these glow samples. So on this page, you can see the pigment colors. So you can get the pigments so that, you know, that's what your watch has these bright colors on it in the, where you put the lumen, loom material. Or you can have neutral colors that glow different colors. So the I'm going to turn on the, or rather turn off the light. To charge these up and show you. So those are the colors if you put these heavy, if you get them with these heavy pigments. And then these are the colors from natural. Just trying to figure out a way to charge them all up at the same time. So you can have pigments that you don't see them, their natural color until they're um, until it's dark, or you can have pigments that are very bright and show up more muted after it's dark. So I have some other videos about the application of this on the channel, so I'm not going to show you that right now, but. Um, the swatches are cool, and you can you can find all the information on their website. I think you may have to email them to get details about um, costs and shipping out of out of Switzerland, but that's cool. Um, and then uh, what else? The So I wanted to, oh, the other thing is that the, um, at the trade fair, there are all these vendors that give, give you samples, in particular HLD clean uh, finger cots and cleaning microfiber, and then these swabs for cleaning dials and stuff. So these are all free samples, and then, uh, of course, you can order from their catalog. You need, when you need more. Uh, and then Maxon, which is like a motor company, or I think they make stepper motors. Um, they also make, uh, they make a lot of their motor parts with ceramic. So they show up at the Watch Expo because they will make custom ceramic parts um, for watches. And ceramics are insane, like the... Um, the difficulty of breaking these tiny this material is just like so strong it's impossible to break it even though it's it's that thin and there you know a lot of um 
watch cases and things, not a lot, but expensive watch cases are made out of that. Um, when they want to use colors or do things that are a bit different. Um, okay, so then the other thing for the for the vintage watch uh, lot that I purchased. Um, I, I, anytime you're working with vintage watches, you need to be careful about radium. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through it and separate out. Um, Separate out anything that has radium, if anything does have radium. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll put the the Geiger counter. It's just a tube that detects some um, beta radiation, I think, alpha radiation. I'm not sure, but the um, visually, I, I don't see any radium on any of these. I don't see any loom at all, so I don't think there's radium on them. So it, with this set, I'm just going to move the tube close to the dials. You'd see something if there was radium there. So those are okay. Same with this. Now these dials are not even like I, if I thought there was radium on them, I would be even more careful already because I don't see any loom, so I don't think there's radium. So that's why I'm not being as careful. Um, this one seems fine. This this is particularly interesting to me because it's um, I've done a lot of work. Like there's a this is an ETA in this watch. I have an ETA. Two two four seven two, and in the process of getting it to this dialless state, I damaged the dial so badly that um, it's no longer usable. And I'm hoping that this dial. This is the reason I bought the lot. I'm hoping that this dial is compatible because it looks like it's the same dial. I would say that's the same dial, so I think I'm in good. Sh I'm in in luck with that. Um, I bought this dial because I like that twelve, and uh, if that's not the same dial, I'd be very surprised. So um, that means I could restore this back to not not being dialless. I kind of grown attached to it dialless, but uh, so what we can do just to check this, open this. This movement is not an ETA 2472 because it's not even an automatic movement, but first I can see if the movement's working. Which it is. And then it doesn't have hands on it. It may be missing. Yeah, I would say it's missing the gears actually, uh, the hour and minute hand gears. But the other reason I bought this is because I was interested in, there's a few different cases in here. So I generally don't like a case design like that, but I thought if, if you're buying a bunch of stuff anyway, and it's not expensive, then you can get these things that you would never buy normally just to have them on hand. Maybe this case back will work with uh, a different case. Things can be switched around and that can be interesting. But the um, <clears throat> the next thing to do is just get this.
Now this, I can see this dial does have loom, but again, no, no action from the Geiger counter. So that loom is um, most likely tritium. It looks a little bit of the kind of golden color of uh, aged tritium. And then this loom on this one is loom that I put there myself, uh, Super Luminova. And I can measure Twenty eight seven five twenty eight three three twenty eight four twenty eight three eight. Okay, I gotta be more careful about this. I was trying to do it for camera. So you can't just measure with the tip on a circle because if you're not at the perfect center of the circle, it's not going to be accurate. So you've got to do something like this. So it looks like the truth is 2838 on that one. And this seems like it's... No, I'm not getting that caught right there. I don't care about touching this at this point. 2843. Okay, they're the same. 28, that's within uh, five uh, hundredths. They certainly look the same. So that's cool. And then I'm assuming that the, the dial pins, yeah. You can see on the back of this, the dial pins are the inverse that this hole here and this hole here are the dial pins. Oh wait, maybe that's not right. Where's the date? Date, date. Is that the dial pin? Okay, I'm gonna have to Oh no, I can see, okay. I can see the dial pin screw is here, or the dial pin is here, because this is the this is where you access the dial pin with the screwdriver like this. So the, the dial pin is the same, and same with on the bottom. So this dial, let me just take a look at this. Okay, so that's cool. And it's also a reminder of like, um, if you work on these really cheap watches, um, you, you can get away, you, you know, you can do something like destroy a dial and, and not feel terribly bad about it because you can get an, another dial that's identical. And this, I think the difference is, I think this is gold plated um, in this season, this was not, this was chrome or not gold plated. But the thing I liked about the dial originally was the was the kind of Art Deco look of that twelve and um, uh, and this was called Flurrier. So this dial was branded with this this watch brand called Flurrier, and this is the exact same dial and it's branded with B E B A whatever that is. Um, and I don't know either brand, and neither brand exists anymore, so it doesn't really matter. I kind of like the precision. I kind of like that logo just because it doesn't. It has even less meaning than flurrier. Um, the problem will be maybe those scratches won't come out, but they're pretty minor. Um, so anyway, that was that was kind of this is the watch. This is why I bought the the lot, and um, 
going to put that in something. This is another Flurio that I bought that was also 2742, 2472. Uh, and this had a pie pan style dial. So the other thing now I have two nice dials that will work with 2472. One is for high hand and one is for not high hand. And uh, once you start getting a few of these, <clears throat> a few different compatible movements and cases and uh, dials, you can start mixing parts. Not these two parts, but that's why I wanted to check it. Um, you can start mixing around, you know, taking something that works from one, putting it with something else. And it's all relatively inexpensive and it's less of a big deal if you <clears throat> make a mistake and damage something. You got something else you can swap in there. Uh, so I wanted to put this in here actually. Kind of don't care so much about this anymore, but it identifies these parts as being related to that movement. Um, I don't think I'll need this anymore. And it's been almost 17 minutes. So I'm just going to quickly go through. Oh, this was with this case. So I'll just quickly go, go through the rest of these. Um, parts. That doesn't look very useful. So that looks like some great practice parts for something. There's no way there's any radium in there. Again, the radium is not just in the watches, it's in the it's specifically in the luminous paint, of course. Okay, so here's another. This is a, a nice stainless steel case. Man, I don't know how nice. Um stay bright steel pocket watch and then it seems like this is the movement for it which seems to be non-working and I can't quite identify Patek Philippe no um, all it has is like Fast and slow marking on that side. Oh, ETA. So there's a little ETA logo there. So this could be, it probably has a number on it somewhere, but it could be identified. Um, and then this could be something to experiment with to see if, if that can be fixed. Since it's a pocket watch, it's not very valuable. And this is a little movement box. It's not quite big enough for it. Oh wait, maybe it goes like this. Good enough. Okay, so that could be like a practice project. This is the seller, Watchies. And they are like five minutes away from me in Geneva. OK, 
Okay, in general, I still don't see any radium in these. Um, not that interested in anything here. Some kind of tiny shipping case for a movement. That could be interesting. None of these are oval. I need a I need an oval shaped. That is a tiny has a tiny movement case. Okay. So this was um, 79 Swiss francs, all of this, both of, it was two separate lots of watches, but the total cost was 79 Swiss francs for everything I'm showing you here. Okay, still don't see radium, but it did seem like a little more active around this. I think that has a little bit. So let's get this over here. So this is a... I'm, I'm not particularly interested in this case, but it's... Let's say it's unusual because it's brass or copper or some alloy, um, and it has these roughly stamped. These are in French. These are the day markers. So like the day of the week: uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, lundi, mardi, mercredi. Judy, Vendredi, Samedi, Dimanche. So it's in repeating circle of like what day of the week it is. And I doubt that it can be rotated. It seems like it would have to be rotatable. Yeah, anyway, it'll be interesting to look at this. I don't, I don't have that much interest in it. But the copper aspect of it. And then it says Brevet right here, which is kind of funny. Like that means patented. If that's, is that what it says? Brevet, yeah, brevet. And then that's kind of stamped over. No, it's like they just don't worry about if you're in the patent zone, you can forget about what day of the week it is, apparently, because it's more important to say it's patented. So that's a little, little bit weird. Um, anyway, that's that. Interesting, but. And then. <clears throat> Little stopwatch. Some notes in French, which I can't read. That's like a new old stock case. This seems to have a, a case back spring right here that I might need. If that's the right size, I might need that for this setup. Um, how can I quickly check? This seems too small for that movement. Yeah, that's a small case. Um, <clears throat> probably this this is going to be too small for any for my uses, but I was looking for something like that anyway. 
Once if, if that's a standard uh, movement size that goes in there, maybe just a, with a small dial, then this could be d done with something. And this is another kind of interesting case. Minerva. Also looks like new old stock. It looks like it's not stainless steel. But it, because it's so new, the plating is still perfect. It has a removable bezel, which is I, I haven't I don't I haven't really dealt with those before, and it looks like it's for a fairly small movement. Um, this is a BAA movement, very small ladies movement, in some kind of a shipping container, a shipping thing very tiny Arcadia that's a very small movement and it's working Kimball that could be It could be fun to work on because it's so freaking tiny. Oh, and this is another strange case material. Twenty-seven minutes, man. Okay, th this is has a dial in it. The dial says Bernard Dons Le Bro. Le Brulou. Oh, the case is for chronograph. Probably not too exciting there. And <clears throat> Another stopwatch. We'll look at that another day. And then this dial. This is like a dial with nothing, with no branding. So this might be a dial that somebody bought and it has hands. Brand new dial for a ladies watch pre-branding so you can brand it yourself. Big stem and crown for something. Okay. Oh man. So I forget what that is. FF. That that movement is FF. This again looks like new old stock. Unique case. Some kind of logo on there that's like a clover leaf. I was going to say, I think this probably works because it looks like it's new old stock, but it's missing a stem, so probably a little bit of work to find out if it works. Pier point. This is from Water Connecticut, it looks like. Oh, watch company. Pier point watch company. Those are interesting hands and dial. And it's got radium burn. It may have traces of radium, and that may not be radium burn, but it may be radium burn. That that shadow of the hands, somebody may have cleaned this because the hands are empty. 
Strange. Huh. I wonder if I could leave this in the sun for a summer and then get the dial to be evenly aged. So this... <clears throat> It's working. Nineteen forty FHF fifty five is a movement, I think. Um anti magnetic stainless steel. Waterproof, five atmosphere. That's kind of cool. It doesn't sound automatic. I'm not. Oh, I could open it. Hmm. I think that just means there's a small movement behind that. I've never seen that before, protector like that. I'm gonna to have to get that off because I don't think you can even remove the crown until you get this protector off there. I don't know if that's anti-magnetic thing or... That looks like it still has some plastic from the factory, like a plastic sticker that you, you would peel off. Or maybe it's, I don't know what's going on there. That's interesting. Okay. This is a quartz movement. It looks like ETA just off the surface, but. <clears throat> it's missing some electronics a lot of it's missing everything not sure what that is not very interesting um this is really interesting except for the crystal is broken and it's probably really not easy to find a replacement and that crystal is trashed like that cannot be fixed um stainless steel backs was made that's just a fun digital watch It'd be fun to look at the mechanics of this and i think the movement is in there it could be a dummy like a showroom dummy also um So this is a mix of parts because that date wheel is for uh, the the date being over here, but the, you know um, it's got the wrong movement in it or something. Ooh, that's that might be the spring I need for this. Oh yeah, that movement looks like it's. Uh, That's a 2783 ETA. 2783. And it seems to be working. So that sits on top of there, assuming that all these parts are correct. Or rather, you could set it in there, yeah. Okay, that's fun.
It doesn't have hands. That movement kind of doesn't belong with, like I said, with this dial, but this dial belongs with this case. So, uh, but there may be some interesting parts and, and things to be had there. This is kind of cute. <clears throat> it's just a case. It's kind of like a, it seems like a, the same case as this. Small version. <clears throat> Miramar. Here's the case back. Miramar. Miramar. Geneve. This has the dates, but it's missing a date hand unless it's under there. I don't see it there. It's missing the date indicator hand. Oh, there's some electronics might belong to that. One can assume that this a watchmaker got this, didn't work, and that was the end of that. This might be some kind of demo case. Like, I've never, I think I've seen this kind of thing before. It's interesting because it's, ex, it's like exhibition on both sides. And it's got, it's got the, the slot for the movement, I mean, for the stem. So it might be fun to put a, a just have this as like a, a way of showing the top and bottom of a movement. This this ring could probably be removed and it's probably kind of standard movement size. So I kind of like that just as an exhibition case for a movement. That's a certain kind of style. These these um, lugs like that. Bernard Dolls. I think there was another one of these. That that's a heavy case. I have a feeling this was for exhibition because missing so many parts doesn't make sense. Not particularly interesting. Okay, so we looked at all that. Isn't this insane though? Like $79. Like if you really like a kit like this could you could learn everything about watchmaking and end up with at least one working piece. Imlihoff, Switzerland. Imhoff, 17 jewel. That's insane. Looks like it would probably work if it got a wind on it. Double barrel. Maybe it's got an alarm or something. Probably that size. Um, pocket watch. This looks like a big brother of that other one. I don't, I don't know what this is with the black anodized metal. Doesn't seem to work. 
says defect. Um, and it's kind of no brand. I'm not sure that's super interesting. I would say that's not interesting. Some straps. I'm kind of interested in straps that are stainless steel and Swiss and vintage. This is uh, Technos. Or is that Tissot? I think that's Tissot action. Yeah. So ZRC, I think, maybe is a Swiss. Oh, I don't like stretch bands. Uh, I, I rec recognize that logo, but I don't. Offhand, I don't know what it is. This is no, no brand. Doesn't mean it's not Swiss, but it's probably not. But that's kind of nice vintage. Eighteen, nineteen. That's just that's a. Is that right? Zero. Eighteen point eight nine. Nineteen. Nineteen is an unusual size, which is kind of cool, because it can be hard to find a nineteen if you need it. Um, I don't know what this is. This might be two. Just got jammed together. No, maybe the, I guess you do this. You overlap it. Yeah, you overlap it on the bottom. Okay. The magic numbers are kind of 18. This is a 17.5. 17.5 is interesting too. That's like the size of this. I guess that's cool. It seems workable, complete. Except for these ends are open. I guess they can be closed, but that's a bit odd. They might have been removed from a watch that had per permanent um, spring bars. This seems to be a similar system. You pull it down. No, no, that's the... I don't know. Figure that out later. This one might be usable. Don't see anything wrong with that. 19. Interesting. Okay, final box. Going on 45 minutes, it's crazy. Uh, <clears throat> this is for a special watch, like an Omega or something that has a special connection place, but it's a no-name No name band. Something's wrong. Oh, there. This would attach in here. One of these things is attached backwards. This is probably upside down. Or maybe this one just goes like that. Yeah, that's probably. I don't know. That looks odd. No, that's upside down. Now they're both upside down. Okay, anyway, that can be fixed. This is the cosmetic side outside of the band, but the clasp is attached wrong. Um, <clears throat> that's an interesting little case. 
like a, a 32 millimeter or something. Thirty-two. Don't know where the back is. There's some crystals with um. That's interesting. Crystals with in with um, the seconds markers. So that could be interesting on something that's too big for that. But um, that could be interesting on a watch without a dial. There's a couple of those. They're kind of big. There's a crystal with a date magnifier. That's some kind of flat crystal. These kinds of things are useful, like movement holder. That looks too small, but probably is associated with one of these cases. You probably ultimately need it if you're going to use the case for something. Um, so like, it's not bad to have a little collection of stuff like this. Ideally in normal useful sizes, but Okay Oh, there's one thing I, I was I did think was interesting which is this this Lanco But this is a definitely an exhibition This was an exhibition watch, so it's it's non-functioning. It would have been in a in a showroom in a display case, but the bezel still works. And unfortunately, the crystal is is has a big gash in it—not a gash, but like a crack all the way through. And that could be a hard crystal to replace because it's uh, inside a bezel. Um, this again, we should. It's fine for radium. Um, and then the question will just be, can this, is this, how hard is it to remove this? It looks like it's glued in there. Um, probably would ruin the dial getting it out. But if not, that could be fun to, to clean up that case. And if you can save the dial in the hands, it could be a fun watch to rebuild. Because these old... Um, Uh, what do you call it? Um, diving watches are popular. Okay. So anyway, that's the... That's my video for today. As usual, it's way too long. YouTube algorithm's not gonna like it. But um, at this point, I don't really care. I'm just having fun. So that can be the fun of buying a lot. Old watchmaker's lot. And these, I talked to the guy I watched at the, at the seller um, from Watchies. And he said what they do is they purposely put together things that they think if somebody's interested in one thing, they'll be interested in the other things in the in the lots so he was right for me there's a lot of interesting stuff in there all right thanks a lot see you the next time